The U.S. announced that it has bought up most of the world's entire supply of a promising COVID-19 drug called Remdesivir from Gilead Sciences. But what is Remdesivir, and how does it help patients to survive COVID? SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, is an RNA virus. This means the virus uses nucleosides as the building blocks of its genetic material, according to University of Maryland, Baltimore County biochemist Catherine Seeley Radke. Writing for media outlet The Conversation, Seeley Radke says the virus relies on an enzyme called polymerase to replicate its RNA nucleoside by nucleoside so that it can make more copies of itself. Gilead's remdesivir is an antiviral and a nucleoside analog, or a chemical compound that is structurally similar to naturally occurring nucleosides. During replication, remdesivir could trick the polymerase into mistaking the antiviral drug, which resembles adenosine, for the genuine article. After this happens, the antiviral is taken into the new RNA strand and stops the polymerase from replicating more of the RNA, which should suppress the virus. Preliminary results from May suggest the drug improved patient survival rate and time recovery. Writing in a news release, the Department of Health and Human Services says, President Trump has struck an amazing deal to ensure Americans have access to the first authorized therapeutic for COVID-19. Other countries are naturally less amused by the fact that the U.S. just nabbed the all-life-saving drugs. Citing Oxford University's Peter Horby, the BBC reports drug trials for remdesivir were conducted in several countries, including the UK. Speaking on the buyout, Sussex University's Ohid Yaqub told the channel that the deal signals an unwillingness to cooperate with other countries and has a chilling effect on international agreements about intellectual property. The world is pretty desperate for a COVID cure. Fortunately, we are getting pretty close to the time that scientists think a vaccine could be ready. Oxford is starting human trials for the first coronavirus vaccine in Europe. Alyssa Granado is one of the first two volunteers to receive the experimental vaccine. Citing the University of Oxford, the BBC reports on April 23rd that the experimental COVID-19 vaccine takes the coronavirus's genetic material and inserts the substance into adenoviruses that are responsible for the common cold. The cold viruses are weakened so that they cannot grow inside the human body after injection. The modified viruses should make the human cells produce the same spike proteins that stud the surface of the coronaviruses and teach the immune system to recognize COVID-19. When vaccine recipients actually encounter the coronavirus, their body's immune system would then be able to identify the threat and scramble antibodies and killer T cells to fight off the infection. At the time of report, two volunteers have received the shot, out of around 800 recruited for the first phase human trial. Citing the doctors, the BBC reports potential side effects include headache, fever and muscle pains a couple of days after the injection. Oxford professor of vaccinology Sarah Gilbert says she is, quote, very optimistic about the vaccine. However, Oxford Vaccine Group director Andrew Pollard says the team is racing to catch the tail end of the pandemic to conduct the test. This means if Britain flattens the curve too fast, there might not be enough data to see if the vaccine actually works. So there you go. Don't get sick. But if you do get sick, it would be for the good of science. According to the Associated Press, intrepid Seattle resident Jennifer Haller is taking a shot for the team as the first person to receive an experimental Wuhan virus vaccine. A U.S. volunteer became the first person to receive an experimental COVID-19 vaccine as part of the first phase of human trials on March 16th, the Associated Press reports. According to Kaiser Permanente, which is funded by the National Institutes of Health to conduct the project, the vaccine eschews dead or inert viruses and instead utilizes messenger RNA or mRNA. Live Science reports the U.S. government has fast-tracked the study without testing on animal models in a bid to bring the vaccine to the market faster. A previous study in molecular theory suggests engineered mRNA could cause ribosomes in human cells to manufacture artificially designed proteins. According to Kaiser Permanente, their vaccine would make cells produce a protein that is found in the outer coating of SARS-CoV-2, which triggers an immune response. 
If a person who received the vaccine is later infected with COVID-19, their prior immune response may help their body mount a stronger reaction to the real virus infection. Citing U.S. health officials, the Associated Press reports that it takes 12 to 18 months for the authorities to validate a new vaccine. But why does it take so long? Well, there are reasons, as Tomo News has explained previously. It could take months to make a coronavirus vaccine. Researchers say previous work on the closely related MERS and SARS could benefit the vaccine development strategy to fight the Wuhan coronavirus outbreak. University of Michigan's Aubrey Gordon and Icahn School of Medicine's Florian Kramer says that nucleic acid vaccine technology, which utilizes viral DNA or RNA material, might lead to a viable vaccine. Writing in an op-ed published in Life Science, the authors explain that making a vaccine involves creating a construct, such as an antigen, that the body's immune system could use to target and attack the virus. A vaccine has to be tested in animal and human trials before it is judged safe and effective. According to the authors, scientists do not have isolated virus samples or enough antibodies for testing the vaccine, and they have not established the animal species suitable for animal trials. The vaccine development process will likely take months to complete. The probable candidates for animal trials include lab mice and non-human primates. The authors state that better global surveillance of viruses would be important to mitigate future epidemics as coronavirus, Zika, Ebola and influenza outbreaks have shown. They say novel vaccine technologies that could be quickly adapted to different strains are needed as part of a proactive approach to combating pathogens. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.